right. And um, I've, uh, I've asked each of them to, uh, to share. Adam, um, since you're maybe the most nervous, we'll let you get out of the way first. Thank you. I wanted to get baptized to, uh, as I've grown in my relationship with God, I feel like this was the next step in my journey. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> My name is Alan Generoso. Uh, my family and I moved here more than four years ago. We were not active to any church. I was born and raised in the Philippines as a Catholic and attended Catholic school from grade school to college. We didn't even plan buying our first home close to this church. It was his plan. God used our daughters uh, to bring us back to church. My mother-in-law would bring them to the children's division Sabbath school class when they visited us back in 2015. After my in-laws left, the girls insisted that we take them to the Sabbath school. After a while, I told my wife, why don't we attend the worship service? Because it's just for the girls. That we, after that, we go home. And it was the start of my journey. It was challenging for me, the Sabbath, the food and drinks, tithing. God opened my heart and mind to the truth that he made sure it was a smooth transition. I continue to learn and seek his words. I thank God for this day to be born again and accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Yeah. Amen. All right. Have, have you ever heard the uh, scripture, and a little child shall lead them? All right. All right, Ray. Okay. Uh, I got a little thing here. It's, it's called My Journey. And I was raised in a Catholic family, and I was baptized as a baby by sprinkling. And uh, when I was like probably 12, we did a, what they call confirmation, where you affirm your baptism and that you are a Christian, you accept Christ. And one of the things I did, I became an altar boy for a little while in the church. And uh, I had a dream one night that about God, it wasn't very good because it scared me, is he came out of the clouds and he was kind of like a Moses with an old beard and part you couldn't see the bottom part of him, but he's up in the clouds pointing down at me with a stern look that, you know, I'm getting you, you know, you're not something. It just scared me. And uh, so my perception of God through my early days were one of fear, not of love. I didn't really feel God's love. I just felt I better measure up. And uh, after I got married, uh, my wife, of course, was my best blessing that I've had. Without her, I don't know where I'd be. But anyway, we had a dentist that was evidently Seventh-day Adventist, and I read material in, the, in their waiting room about the Sabbath and other things, and I go, and what the heck, what's this all about? I had no idea. And uh, so I started reading all kinds of other materials and stuff, and I was talking to a priest one time, and he told me, well, that's sinful. You shouldn't be reading other things that the Catholic Church has it all figured out, and that's not good. Uh, so, as time went by, uh, I uh, had a meeting with the priest because I'm going, this just isn't working. And I told him what my beliefs were about hell, about Sabbath and other things. And I left that feeling totally lifted up because he said, well, you're, you're not a Catholic anymore. You just go in peace. Basically, he said, you, you know, I understand. And... Uh, 
when I drove out of there, the sun was shining, everything was great, and I just felt re like a new person, that I had gotten rid of something that was holding me back. And uh, I got a letter from my sister telling me I had rejected Christ by rejecting his church. I attended all kinds of churches. I've got nine of them listed here, but I won't go into them. There are just a lot of them I'm going through all kinds of stuff. And one thing I do is I go all out, whatever I do. You can ask my family. I'm uh, Bible crazy, nutrition crazy. I'm crazy about my family. I have a video camera that gets my family irritated at times. I love horses and acting and doing projects. I get pretty involved in them. I don't just sort of do them. I do them. So anyway, to sum it up, I feel like the Holy Spirit has led me here. And my grandson went to the Journey School for a couple of years, and we ended up coming in here and meeting people. And I, I was so taken back by the openness and the love that I, that I felt here. I never felt it. <clears throat> anyway, thank God for this church, and I'm just looking forward to my journey ahead. Thank you. All right. All right. What a blessed day, huh? Oh, um, each each of these have uh, have have these guys have been studying the scriptures, uh, growing. Um, I know that Adam uh, has has uh, come through a crisis and really started started discovering God in a new way. Um, I, each each of these guys, I've just enjoyed getting to know, and uh, so. Having heard their testimonies, uh, we need a motion to accept them into the, uh, the Journey Adventist Church subject to their baptism. Okay, a second? All in favor, say aye. aye. All right. Hey, um, you know, one of the things Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and um, I was busy baking bread on Friday like I normally do, so I would like to, uh, I made challah. Um, and so I would like to um, give each of you a loaf of challah, and that, that you can uh, share with your families. And then um, we also have these uh, baptismal certificates to, uh, to help you to remember this day. And uh, so, Alan, here you go. You're first here. And, uh, oops, Adam, sorry, and then Ray. All right, um, let's, uh, let's continue in our worship now as we have our children come forward. We have, uh, have a story for you. So come on forward, kids, and we're going to head out this door over here and uh, get ready for baptism. How's everybody today? Did you all get to church on time this morning? Oh, that's good. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was driving to, to church when suddenly I got a super duper extra itchy itch on the bottom of my foot. It was so itchy that I needed to do something about it. And you see, the nerve in my foot was telling my brain, you have got to scratch this itch. Well, I didn't want to pull over because that would have been dangerous. And I didn't want to reach down and scratch it because that would have been dangerous. So I said, what am I going to do? Uh, I said a little prayer and said, Lord, could you please take this itch away? I need to get to church on time. I, I have to be there. I'm helping today. And I'm already a little late. So 
will you take it away? And then I started thinking about some of the memory verses and repeating those in my mind. Then I asked Grace if we could sing Jesus Loves Me. And you know what? After a while, that itch got less and less. And pretty soon, I didn't feel it anymore. And I made it to church on time. So it reminded me of sin and how every one of us in the whole world are born sinners. Sin is like a super-duper extra itchy itch that we are tempted to scratch, like lie or disobey our parents, steal something that doesn't belong to us, perhaps, or cheat. See, this is like the sin that's scratchy all over and itchy all over our hearts. So we, it's really important that we learn the Ten Commandments because the Ten Commandments show us what sin is. Like nerves tell our brains that we have an itch, Jesus tells us when sin has entered our hearts. The word in the Bible helps us fight the super-duper extra itchy itch of sin. So let's put the word over the sin. And But because we were born sinners, we are always going to have sin scratching our hearts while living here on earth, aren't we? And that is why we need Jesus to, who helps us with our super-duper extra itchy sins. Jesus doesn't want us to sin because he knows how much it hurts us. Can you hold this, Grace? Audrey, can you hold this? Will you hold the Ten Commandments? Thank you. Okay. So the more we know Jesus... And how do we get to know Jesus? Does anyone know how we, we get to know Jesus? Anybody? How about praying? When we pray, we get closer to Jesus. What else? Fold our hands when we pray. What can we read? The Bible. Can I say it? The Bible. Right, we could read the Bible. Jesus loves you and me and all of us that he died on a cross for our sins. And one day when we live in heaven, one day when we live in heaven, all those itchy sins, those super duper extra itchy, itchy sins are going to be gone. And our hearts will never, ever want to sin again. So thank you for listening. You guys may go back to your seats now. We are going now to have prayer. I will give you a minute to come forward if you like to, or you can stay in your seats, whichever you prefer. We have so much to be thankful for, don't we? We can come here in peace and quiet and worship the Lord. And we are told that we should be thankful. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Shall we kneel, if, if, if you're able, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with humble hearts to thank you. We are so blessed. You love us so much that you allowed your Son your only son, to come and die for us. Thanks is such a small word for that, Lord, but we do thank you. We thank you for this family that we can come together and worship you. We thank you for the freedoms that we have so that we can worship you. Father, we ask a blessing this morning on those who could not be here, those who might be ill or discouraged. Bless each one of them, Lord. You know their names, and you know what the problems are with each one of them. We thank you. We thank you for hearing our prayer, for forgiving each of our sins, Lord. 
and for applying the blood of Jesus to our lives and our hearts, Lord. We thank you for your constant work in our lives. We just praise your name this morning. Amen. I think uh, I think Alan just drew, grew about two inches taller, <laughs> listening to his family, and uh, so, Alan, it has been so good getting to know you, and uh, I am glad that your family made the choice to start coming to this church. Um, I, I would invite uh, Alan's friends and family to stand for him right now. Uh, as we uh, as we prepare for for this time, Alan, 
God's hand is upon you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He has called you before you even knew him. And he has brought you faithfully on this journey. This is a point in the journey, and it will continue as you come to know Jesus more and more, and as you fall more and more in love with him. So, Alan, uh, because you love Jesus and you have committed to follow him for the rest of your life, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Adam. Adam has been uh, has been coming uh, to Pat Stanley's Sabbath school and, and Dan Dan Hughes, and um, and Adam came to me uh, and said I would like to study for baptism, and uh, he told me some of his story, and um, and you've heard uh, heard. That he is a man of few words, but a deep guy. He's very deep. And um, as I've gotten to know him better and his, and his wife, Alicia, uh, as they've been coming to Sabbath school and studying together the, the uh, Bible studies, and uh, as I came and, and confirmed his, uh, his knowledge of, of, the, of the Bible and his commitment to continue studying in God's Word, I've just come to really love this man. Um, he, is, uh, he, is, he has got a quiet strength, and the, the church needs people like Adam, and I'm just grateful that he has come here. So Adam's family and friends, I know uh, there they are, uh, just stand for, uh, for Adam right now. And Adam, because you love the Lord, because you have a deep abiding faith, and you have committed to follow Jesus for the rest of your life, it is now my honor and my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Ray, come on down. We have to do the opposite side. Yes. All right. Uh, family and friends of Ray, if you want to stand, he's got, uh, got a whole bunch of people here. You know, uh, I love Ray's story. This man has the spiritual gift of wisdom and knowledge, and I, I told him as, uh, as we continued to study together, I said, Ray, I can see you as being a Bible teacher and going out and sharing all the wisdom and the knowledge that God has given you with others and preparing them for baptism. And he, he just really felt that because there have been different times in his life where he, where he said, a priest? No. Uh, a, a pastor? No. When I said a Bible teacher, his eyes lit up, and this man is a studier. He is uh, just, just an, an amazing, amazing person. And I am so excited about the way God is going to continue to lead in his life. He is, uh, he is a special person. Each one is in, in their own way. But God has made you a masterpiece as he has made all of us a masterpiece. And it's all about Jesus. It's yes. all about what he does yes. and how... He says, if, when you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. And Ray, thank you for seeking God with all your heart. It's so wonderful to see your family and friends here. This is your family. So now, Lord, because, because Ray has, has committed to follow you, because he loves you with all his heart, and he is committed to continue to follow Jesus for the rest of his life, I now baptize you, Ray, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Friends, one of the greatest things we can do in our life is to follow Jesus and learn more about him. If you uh, if you felt God speaking to your heart, I would just urge you be in touch with me or one of one of the elders and we will we will help you to learn and study and know more about Jesus. He is a wonderful wonderful friend to know and Baptism is just a, a very special time of worship um, and a commitment to, you, to, the, to all of you. So God bless you. Uh, what a great day. This is just very special. God bless you all.